get a load of this? Sam is going to be a prima ballerina at the Metropolitan Opera House. You miss Ted Koppel one night and you're out of it. Stop! Stop. 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 Sam's ballet teacher says she has real talent. Yeah, she could end up dancing all the major cities in Europe. London, Vienna. Paris. Oh, Paris. I love Paris. I wish I looked great in a beret. <laughs> I'm sure you will, but how does Sam feel about being pushed into a career? No, no, I'm not pushing her. I just wanted to eat, drink, and breathe ballet. <laughs> By the way, Mother, what's wrong with pushing? If you had pushed me... I'd be at the Philharmonic today. Doing what? Hi. Welcome back to... Hey, hey, yo, oh, oh, hey. The Who's the Boss podcast. Hmm. I'm Tori. And I'm Kevin. And we are... <laughs> as if you weren't sure. And we are here to recap, to rewatch, and discuss every single episode of Who's the Boss. Every single one of them. Yep, here we are. Okay, so we don't have any news this week. I know, the news has been quiet. I mean, I probably said that before. I think I said that last week. It has, yeah, and I... I'm getting a little concerned. (laughs) I know. You know, it is not at all impossible that we just never hear about this again. Remember, now, I'm not saying that's going to happen, and I don't Mm. think it will. But do you remember when they announced there was going to be a Northern Exposure reboot? Oh yeah, what happened to that? Yeah, no, nothing. Nothing happened to that. So yeah, I do remember that. There's always that chance, but I'm going to hold out hope. Okay, and if good. if if not, we have this. <laughs> we will always <laughs> What's have that. This. <laughs> but what I do want to do real quick before we get into the episode is I want to read a few um, reviews that we've gotten on iTunes. So, oh, good. Yeah. Reviews are good. (laughs) We have two. I know, and they are good reviews, too. Don't read, yeah, don't read the bad ones. Uh, Oh, well, honestly, we haven't gotten any bad ones, but if we do, I will read them. Oh, yeah, that'd be my favorite part of the show. (laughs) So, (laughs) we got one the other, um, when was this one? November 8th that says, seriously, AOOA, I have been secretly binging Who's the Boss episodes during COVID times, Mm -hmm. and this podcast is the perfect way to dig deep into these episodes. I'm calling it Nostalgia as Self-Care, and I'm loving it. Also, Hmm. Tony Danza forever, am I right? So thank you. This was sent in by World's Okayest Runner. Okay. Which I also love that. (laughs) I love that name because I have a mug that says World's Okayest Mom. Yeah. And then another new one that says, So much fun. I've watched Who's the Boss on and off for the past 10 years or so, but re-watching it in full as an adult has given me new perspective. This podcast fuels the intrigue of the plot and characters as well as touching on the nostalgic points. Absolutely wonderful and a great way to keep fans entertained until we learn more about the reboot. Oh, that's so, great. So thank you. Yeah, that's good. It's very nice to see those reviews. All right, now I'll, I'll finish this episode then. <laughs> you were going to leave? Yeah, I was kind of done with this. <laughs> but now that we got those, I, you know, we got the reviews, I feel better about it yeah no, so thank kidding. you and i think yeah, those good. reviews help i mean you know we're not in any league to compete with other podcasts on itunes but i think you know having the reviews help so if anybody out there would like to leave one we would always appreciate it thank yeah. you yeah now good stuff so this episode is season two episode 15 it's called gotta dance mm. it first aired january 21st 1986 And the TV Guide summary says Samantha devotes herself to ballet after her instructor says she has the makings of a prima ballerina. Mm. It was written by Howard Myers. This is his first episode, but I believe he wrote about 25 episodes total. Oh, really? Yeah. So he'll be around for a while. Mm. When this episode opens... The family, I'm going to call them the family. Tony, Mona, Jonathan, Samantha, yeah, Angela. they're the family yes, at they've, this point. They've all just gotten home from the ballet. Tony is dancing around, <laughs> st- spinning, <laughs> trying to do a turn, and um, almost kicks almost Sam. Kill, yeah, yeah, almost knocks Sam down. <laughs> yeah. Hits her jacket, I think, I'm yeah, pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they're all very excited. And Angela's, uh, Samantha says, you know, thank you, Angela, for taking us to the ballet. 
So it appears that, you know, Angela bought tickets for all of them to go. And she says, you know, no problem. I always find an evening of culture is uplifting. Mm. So I think it's cute. It's this cute showing that Angela's like introducing them to stuff that she likes. Like it could be interpreted as like, oh, she took Sam and Tony to try to make them a little more cultured, which probably in the back of her mind she did. But I also just think it's cute. Like he's Tony's introduced her to a lot of stuff that she probably hasn't done before. And, um, you know, now she's kind of showing Sam the ballet, Tony too, mm-hmm. probably because she's hoping she can groom him one day into being something suitable of, the, of, a, of a husband. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> she's like, okay, we're all done with med- mud wrestling. Let's try ballet. Right. The women also wear small outfits, but they have talent. <laughs> That's true. That, maybe that got his attention. Not that mud wrestling doesn't take talent, because no. I'm sure it does. No, it does. The, um, real quick, the one thing I'm been noticing in the last like few episodes it's probably been going on forever but it's really starting to wear on me or get to me or or it got my attention is every time tony busts out one of his little dad jokes he claps this little clap oh really yeah you need to really like for that (laughs) yeah yeah it's uh, it's like he he tells a joke he's like hey and then he does the clap yeah because he's very proud of himself. right so and it's like i don't want to say it's where i mean whatever it's it is what it is, but I say it's wearing on me, but it's not. But I'm just like, okay, every time Tony's got his little funny joke, he does his little clap. It's like when I realized that Jerry Seinfeld would laugh at all of his jokes on Seinfeld. Okay, That's maybe the it's only that. thing I can see now whenever I watch. Right, whenever Seinfeld. he just, yeah, Seinfeld's yeah. laughing at his own jokes. This is what Tony does. He claps. Yeah, yeah it happens right here in this scene here. So, so. Angela had, you know, says that she she finds a night of culture uplifting, and Sam says, "Me too." And Jonathan's like, "Oh, do you want my opera tickets?" So he's trying to pawn his opera tickets off on Sam, hoping that Angela can take her instead of him. So Sam says that she wishes so much that she could dance like that, and Angela says, "Well, you know, why don't you take some lessons?" She's like, "I don't know. It looks really hard." And Angela says that there's a school in town. And Tony asks, well, is it a good school? Like, Tony, what do you care? <laughs> like, well, may, I mean, wants his kid going to a good school. I guess good... so. But I guess he means, like, is it like a conservatory? Like, he wants the best, I guess. Right. That's what I got out of it. Yeah. Like, is it a good one? And Angela says, one? he. well, the instructor has a Russian accent. Well. And Tony says, all right, ski. Oh, God. <laughs> Why? Oh, I know. Right, ski. And, then, not... and then, after he says, all right, ski, he claps. Oh, oh does he? Yes. Okay, great. Now this is all we're going to notice. See? Um, so, yeah. So, again, a joke that we wouldn't really hear anymore, but it was the 80s. Um, right. <laughs> so, and then, apparently, Mona has slept with this man with a Russian accent because she's like, oh, is he about 5'10", tall, right. dark, handsome? And they're like, yeah, well, possibly. Why? She says, no reason. So right, very Mona. Of course, <laughs> she likes him. She slept with the one Russian ballet instructor in, in town. town. Yeah. So yeah, I guess this is probably more of like a ballet. It's obviously like a ballet only dance studio. Like that's what they focus on. They specialize. Yeah. So now it's Samantha's first day of class. There's a bunch of girls and they're like stretching and getting ready, and it seems odd. That, like, Samantha would start with this class. Like, all these girls seem to have been there a bit. That's and true. seem to know what they're doing. But it's TV. So, this, the representation right, of you're, you're a ba- dance class on TV is not at all going to be accurate. Right. You're basing it on what our kids do, which is very different levels of dance. Right. At different... Different age groups Skill and levels. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. So. But, like, I doubt that they would put a 13-year-old who's never danced in with these girls who have been doing this for a while. Unless this is the beginner dance and she's just, like, catching up to what she's missed so far. Maybe. But overall, I do not like this episode. <laughs> and I'm going to get into why here. <laughs> I know. And I can, after watching it with you, I can see why you might not like it. Yeah. So, um, Tony introduces himself to the instructor. The instructor is named Sergey. Sergey. Yeah. And he's... Like fawning all over Sam, you know, like, oh, oh, Ronnie, you're my new 
student, you're my new protege, you know, kisses her on both cheeks. And he says to Tony, you know, that's just a Russian um, custom. I hope you don't mind. Right. Tony's like, oh, no, not at all. And then he kisses him on both cheeks. I know, cheeks. which is kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> so Sam goes to get changed for her first class. And the parents sit off to the side and watch while the kids are in class. So Tony goes and takes a seat. And he sits next to a woman um, who, her, the character's name is Clarissa Potter. She's a mom of another girl in the class. Mm. And she's played by Laura Waters, Waterbury, Waterbury. Waterbury. Right. I wrote her name the wrong way but at first, but I, I see that oh. it's Waterbury. Um, so she's best known for Better Off Dead. I'm sure <laughs> if you've watched that movie, you remember her. It. She's great in that movie. She is. She's fantastic in that movie. Surprise. So, unfortunately, she passed away in 2013 from uh. Alzheimer. Oh, so, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. She didn't seem that old. But, so, Tony tells the mom, you know, this is my daughter's first class. She's really excited. And the mom just kind of cuts him off. And she's like, oh, well, my daughter, you know, is so great. She has so much grace and talent. Mm-hmm. And I bet you can pick out who she is. So when we see the girls in the class, there's one girl who's a little larger than the other girls and a little less coordinated, and that is Cindy Potter. And looks just like the mother with the hair. The yes. Per- like the almost yeah, the, permed. The permed hair. The curly look, hair. Yes, they look weird. exactly the same. So Tony's like, okay, yeah, I see her. But this poor girl is now like the butt of the joke for the rest of the episode. Right. Hence why you don't like the episode. Right. And again, like this is a storyline we wouldn't see anymore. But one, it's just not funny to make fun of this girl for this whole episode about being heavier than the other girls right. and not being as coordinated. And like this also had to kind of suck for that actress. Like, okay, we need a part for some girl that's <laughs> just kind of chubby to come in here and then right we're going to make fun of this episode yeah. right but again like back then it wasn't at all you know odd to like obviously as we've seen in this show where we've made fun of Angela for her mm-hmm. weight often and on growing pains where Mike would make fun of Carol all the time like it wasn't it was completely accepted to make fun of women's right. weight on TV and now it's not. So this just mm. isn't a storyline that we would see on t- t- TV today. Yeah, that's true. But we have to, you know, count them some slack because it was a different time. Can't really hold them accountable to our views. The 80s. Yeah. Um, and the thing is, is when... So this was probably one of my favorite episodes as a kid. And I think just because it mostly centered on Sam and because I didn't care about them making fun of that girl at right, the time. Right, probably made fun of her. I mean, not knowing Yeah, any- like better right i would i totally laughed along with them i'm sure right that's what i mean yeah um you know and now i see it differently i see all the sam episodes differently but also um i see a different part of this episode differently which i'll get to once we get into it more so we see now a montage of sam taking classes and she's getting better she's trying really hard she's doing a great job Tony is there every class watching, and so is Clarissa, who is also Cindy's mom. And you can tell the time passing by the length of Clarissa's scarf. I know. She's <laughs> <It's>, just knitting <laughs> yeah. a scarf the whole time. Yeah, the first class is like starting off real small. It's really cute, too. And by the end, it's super long. So after class, Sergey comes up to Tony after class... Of after like three weeks that she's been in he comes up to tony and says you know sam has come a really long way in three weeks she's doing great he says she has oodles of talent and perhaps she could even become a pr- prima ballerina mm. and tony's prima. like well isn't she getting started too late and he's like you know with someone with her talent you know that shouldn't be an issue and tony gets really excited that samantha is some kind of ballet prodigy at this point and he's like you know but you have to come five days a week and you're gonna need to rehearse at home it's gonna be tough and tony's like we'll do it so when tony gets home he tells angela and angela also says like isn't she getting started too late and he's insulted that she would even think that (laughs) and he names off like a bunch of ballerinas that sergey did that 
Right. She could be, which I don't remember what their names were. Right, but why? How would Tony remember those? I names? know he Come remembered on. him from that conversation. Please, and he's Angela says after he rattles them off, "I'm impressed," and he says, "So am I." But they're <laughs> totally talking about the fact that he actually knew what those names were. So Angela says, "Well, is Sam excited about this?" And he ha- says that he hasn't told her yet because. It's going to cost a lot. It's five days a week, 20 days a month, and that's a lot of bread. Right. I like that. Yeah. That's a lot of bread. So Angela says, let me tell you a story. And he's like, what, can we just stick with my problem right now? And she says, you know, this goes along with it. It's about a little girl who used to play the cello. And she was good. Really good. I know. <laughs> I love when she starts to tell the story. Tony's like, I got something in the kitchen. And she's like, no, sit down. This is a good story. Because he knows where this is going. Oh, totally. is no good. <laughs> and she, but she says, like, the other little girl, she wanted to do other things, and no one pushed her to practice. So she gave up the cello and became mm. an ad executive. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, let me take a shot in the dark here. Her name's Angela? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And she says, you know, the point is that she wasted her talent and she doesn't want that to happen to Sam. One thing I did notice about this scene is Angela's wearing a pretty solid Cosby sweater. It's a, <laughs> it's a really very Cosby yeah. looking. Yeah, the whole outfit is fantastic. Like, I, I wasn't paying attention until you said something because I was typing. And the glasses look larger than ever. Oh, yeah. I mean, we always they say that. I feel so like the big. glasses are getting bigger. And then when I think they can't, I feel like they do. But I'm sure they're probably still the same <laughs> size. These, like, they start at her eyebrows and they end below her nose. Yeah, it's it's intense. They're very large. <laughs> yeah, they're very large. They're like below but the I love, cheek. I like the pants. They're like below the cheek. I they know, the are. Leather. The gray, I feel like we've seen the gray leather pants. Yeah, I think you're right. I don't remember my, when. Yeah, but I'm, I've noticed the gray leather pants. I do think you're right. So a, cute, a thing that I really like here, we have some good character development between Tony and Angela. She says, I know how you feel about me giving, your, giving you money, but please let me do this for Sam. She'd be thrilled to pay for part or even all. And in the past, in the episode Keeping Up with the Marcy's, where Tony was like, no way, absolutely not, he just says, okay. <laughs> I know. That, that's interesting. <laughs> Usually Tony's way too proud, but this time it's like, yeah, that's fine. It's right. Cool. Like, I mean, I guess now they've gotten a little more comfortable with each other and, you know, he maybe feels differently about her relationship with Sam. Um, and she's like, well, okay to part or okay to all? <laughs> no, just, now she's okay. like, what did I just get myself into? And he says, we'll work something out. So, yeah, I really like that. And he says, you know, for to pay you back, he'll get her front row seats when Sam is dancing in Swan Lake at the Met. <laughs> so Mona comes home, and Tony tells Mona about that Sam's going to be a prima ballerina. And she's like, oh, that's great. Has anybody asked Sam about being pushed into a career? I know. And Mona just comes home with, like, four oversized shopping bags. <laughs> like, where has she been? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know. Mona, I mean, Mona's living her best life. She absolutely is. Absolutely. Um, And he says, you know, I don't want, I don't, I'm not pushing her into anything. I just want her to eat, drink, and breathe ballet. Right. But I love, Mona's always like the equalizer. You know, whenever they are like panicking about something or Mm -hmm. upset about something or happy about something, she comes in and just like, neutralizes the room <laughs> and somehow insults Angela in the process <laughs> yes, every time course. but yeah so um Angela says you know what's wrong with pushing if you had pushed me I'd be at the Philharmonic today <laughs> <laughs> this this is probably one of my favorite this, lines in this whole episode yeah this is absolutely my favorite made part me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Mona says doing what <laughs> <laughs> Just tearing into her. It's great. And Angela says, playing the cello. Angela's <laughs> upset. You know, Tony's like, I think Angela's just upset that she wasted her talent. And Mona's like, are you kidding me? You couldn't even get your legs around the thing. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, I just Which love is it. funny because Angela has pretty long legs. I she think, does. For her oh, She absolutely does. She's all <laughs> so legs. She'd have no problem getting her legs around <laughs> <Right>. a cello. <laughs> Um, so 
Mona's like, you know, this means a lot for Sam. It's no more junk food, no more fun, no more boys. So I think this, you know, they're referencing girls who, and I know this was like a lot of stories have come out of Russia of like prima ballerinas Mm. where these girls are treated terribly. They sometimes have to go to like a boarding school to live, to be trained where they're training hours and hours a day. They don't have a life. You know, they eat a very strict diet to make sure that they stay small. Right. They oh, okay. would like bind their feet and stuff. Mm. So I think that's where like they're coming, Mona's coming from, right. from this. And, you know, I guess if you're on a track to be a prima ballerina as a child, it probably is a very strict thing. But right. everybody calm down. Right. Like, I mean, that's, just... but that's also where um, Samantha's coming from, like. I mean, you'll see later. Right, in the episode, right, obviously, yeah. But. So I think that that's what they're, you know, they're figuring right. that that's what Samantha's going to have to do to be able to be a prima ballerina. Yeah, you're right. Like, everybody calm down. But yeah, because it's it's like all or nothing. Like she has to be this prima ballerina, or she just doesn't take dance at all. Like, right. Like, I mean, can we just take <laughs> dance for like exercise or right. you know for the fun of it? Yeah. So um, they cut to Mona eating a kitchen, eating a kitchen, in the kitchen, eating a sundae. And Tony comes in and Kevin, I'm, I had to point this out to you. You missed it. What is he singing? Oh, yeah. How did I miss that? I don't know. But he's He's another wait a moment. It is another wait a moment. Wait a moment. Now, I got um, a listener Wrote to me and said that... I can't that, believe I missed it. I don't even know how. I always catch I know, those. you do. I'm so mad at myself. <laughs> a listener wrote in and said that there's an episode in season seven where... Oh, you kidding was me. it eight? I don't know. I can't remember. But she said that he's still singing it and he sings, wait a moment, wait a moment longer. Really? <laughs> yeah, so we'll have to remember that. Maybe we can use it as one of our songs to end the show. <laughs> He can loop it or something. Him <laughs> singing wait All a of moment. his wait a moments. Oh, that would be actually excellent. You, you get to edit that. I should have written down the times on those. <laughs> so, yeah, Mona's just eating this disgustingly but delicious it's be- wait, looking sundae. it's before Sunday. he comes in? It's as he's walking into the kitchen when she's I making did, the there's sundae. There's no way. It's not, it's not in the closed captioning then. Oh, it must not be then. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. I'm glad okay. you caught it. Thank God. So, um... He, Tony's like, what are you doing? I'm making dinner. Dinner's going to be ready in an hour. And she says, I'm dieting. <laughs> I find that if I have two to three of these a day, when dinner comes around, I eat like a bird. <laughs> three su- ice cream sundaes? <laughs> yeah. With whipped <laughs> Makes cream? Makes no sense. And magic. Sh- I want to. You said chocolate sauce. I want to pretend it's magic shell. So- I think magic it's hot fudge. Shell. Yeah, you're probably right. And that's what I want to You're probably right. I really am going to have ice cream after this. Okay. I had talked myself out of it, and now I've talked myself back into it. Right, because Mona's having ice cream. Yes, I, because I need very few reasons. Like, everything I already makes know that. me want I ice have, cream. I shouldn't have even said magic yeah. gel or anything. <laughs> that probably pushed you over the edge. Yeah. Um, and I love that behind Tony, which we can see in this scene, is that little framed embroidery oh of Friendship gosh. is a Garden. I always notice that. So, okay, I'm sorry. Where was I? Now, Jonathan comes in, and he mm-hmm. asks where Sam is. Mm-hmm. And Sam's like, he's at ballet. Um, she's at ballet. What is wrong with me tonight? So Wait, you said Sam says she's at ballet. Tony says that. Thank you. Tony right? says, yes. That Sam now you're at confusing ballet. me. Sam wasn't even there. Um, I should, <laughs> I've had like, I've had maybe one third of a drink, and now I can't talk. I know. Um that's it. And Jonathan says, things. she's never around to ignore me anymore. <laughs> so cute. Yeah, which is cute. <laughs> you know? I, sometimes, it's funny, like, he won't be in a whole episode, but he'll have, like, a couple of lines that are so funny yes. and cute or whatever. I know, already, And then like, he wanders away. He's yep, gone. And then we'll, yeah. Do we see, oh, we don't, we do see him in the tag of this one. He will be back. He's not gone for the entire episode. Oh, okay. Um, Mona says, that's because she lives at the dance studio. And Tony says, I lived on a baseball field growing up. Yeah. And I became a professional baseball player. Truth. So she's need, she needs to be doing this. Um, Sam comes in, and as a dance mom, I was appalled 
By the fact that Sam walks into the kitchen uh, wearing, wearing her ballet, wearing shoes. ballet shoes. <laughs> Again, it's just TV. But you, they, yeah, they they're don't not allowed to wear their dance shoes anywhere everywhere. besides the studio. But you know what? Also, like a, a quick side note. And I think it's and, snowing outside, too. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> She's wearing her ballet shoes and leather ballet shoes in the snow. I um, A quick side note, and I don't want to derail the show because I'm really good at that, but... Um, the fact that Tony is also embracing it means that maybe he understands the value of what Angela is paying for these lessons. Oh, yeah. That, I'm sure. Right? I mean, a little bit. I'd like yeah. to hope that, that Tony is, that's also the reason why he's so into it. But I guess it's probably mostly for to see Sam succeed at the ballerina. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure he wants Samantha to take this seriously if Angela's paying for it. But yes, I think at this point he has stars in his eyes that Mm -hmm. she's going to be a prima ballerina and he just wants her to be super successful. And it's even maybe like, you know, it was his dream to be a professional baseball player and that got Oh, that's good too. And so if she can accomplish this, it's like like... she would be accomplishing that for him as well. Oh, it's good too. Yeah, see? Very good. Yeah, we had some good conversation there. Yeah. You, you okay. didn't derail. Okay. You were... <laughs> uh, give me uh, give me five minutes. <laughs> um, so, yeah, she so says... So she comes in. Yeah, she says that Sergei says she has the best rendezvous in the whole class. Yeah, this is funny too. Yeah. <laughs> as dance parents, this was funny. Yeah. And Tony's very excited about that. He said... Can, did you ever see anyone Jean rondier than that? I know something? I didn't think you'd be able to. <laughs> I, say. I'm sure I didn't get it right. I but. know I, I, I um, know I couldn't have said it. So Jonathan wants to go ice skating, and Sam really wants to, but I she know. Tony looks at her, and then I know, she that's, says, "I thought that was like late, like kind of lame." Like, yeah, like you know, what gives her a look at? like you you can't go ice skating, right? Which, why would he know why she couldn't go ice skating? Yeah, maybe he's been reading up on all the things she's not supposed to do. And she says it may shorten her muscles. Again, another Jonathan moment. Yeah, I know, Jonathan. What's wrong with short muscles? That's all I've got. (laughs) (laughs) That was a good one. I know, so cute. And then she's... Uh, Samantha continues to stretch on the chair. Right. Yeah, putting her foot Dance stretching. over the placemat to stretch. Gotta stretch those muscles. They can't be short. No, no. They have to be long muscles. And she, as she's stretching, she notices that Mona's eating that Sunday, which is the whole mm. reason why we had to have Mona have on that ridiculous diet where she eats two to three Sundays a day. Yeah, there it is. So that there would be a Sunday on the table for Samantha to see. Um, and then, again, Samantha's tempted, but she's like, no, no, I'm not going to eat it because of ballet. So we hear screeching from the living room, and they go out there. <laughs> st- again, my favorite part of the show is the cello <laughs> aspect of it. And Angela has the cello out and is practicing. Sorry, I, I'm turning the page. My head. <laughs> of course. Um, okay, so now Judith does the funniest. The tongue. Every time Her she plays it, the tongue out is out. It's with hilarious. Concentration. <laughs> it's the it's hilarious. so awesome. It's so good. That's what made me laugh so hard, too, when I saw the tongue. Yeah, this is... These are the only parts that I do really enjoy of this episode, even though Angela is the Yeah, the whole cello story of this show, (laughs) of this episode, is the best part of it. So Mona says, it's back! (laughs) (laughs) And (laughs) Samantha asks, where did you get that? And she says, well, Tony found it for me in the attic. And Mona's mad and, like, making a stabbing motion at Tony. Right. And he says, it wasn't easy either because it was buried under stuff, almost as if. (laughs) And Mona says, yes, I hid the cello. Right. She went up there and just buried it (laughs) under everything. (laughs) Now, one, first of all, I love the fact that Angela still has a cello that she gave up in childhood. Yeah. I don't. We don't we don't keep anything. No. But it is funny to me that someone was still. We're the still, worst. I played flute until college, and I sold that thing as soon as I wasn't done with it. When I was done with it, I feel like you had it when we got together, though. We did. I did. I. You must have sold it after that. After we got together, or yeah, in one of our old houses that we got rid of a bunch. I of remember stuff having the, the flute, anyway. and I do kind of regret getting rid of that. I should have held on to it, but mm. our kids still play. It would be sitting somewhere in this house, not being played. That's true. That's if I point. ever really have a burning desire to play the flute, I'll buy a new one. 
Um, so, blah, 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 what was I saying? Sorry, yeah, so, I, I, so, again, see? <laughs> Angela says, I mean, Mona says, that was wrong of me. I should have burned it. Mm, <laughs> now, and then Angela's completely offended. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I love that she's holding on the fact that she is was could have been a really good cello oh, player. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A yes. damn good she cello probably, player. She's thought about that multiple times over the years. <laughs> this has not come out of nowhere. And Mona went into an attic of a house she doesn't own, found the cello, and hit <laughs> it. Buried <laughs> it. It's under not a even bunch her of house. things. Yeah. Um, so... The phone rings, and Tony mm. answers it. And it's funny because Tony is super excited that it's Chad McCann on the phone. Mm. Where you would think that Tony would be like... He would not, hung up on Chad McCann. Yeah, because he's always kind of really, um, you know, grumpy when it comes to the guys that are coming around Samantha. So he says it's Chad McCann. Angela and Samantha start screaming right. in the background. Like, Angela says, it's the cutest boy in school. I know, right? <laughs> and Samantha goes running over to the phone. So he had to have heard all the commotion in the background of that conversation. So Chad wants to know if she can go sledding with him on Saturday. Sledding? But of course. Well, that's right. It's snowing. Yeah, it? it's snowing. She trudged through the snow in her ballet shoes to get home and show them that Ronde Jean. So... <laughs> She says, I can't because I have ballet on on Saturdays. And Tony's like, oh, it'll probably be okay if you just miss this one class. And she says, Dad, did you miss baseball practice? And he says, no. Yeah, this is funny. And then she says, Angela, did you miss cello? And Angela She's says, like, oh, all the, the time. time. <laughs> And that tells <laughs> so that tells Samantha what she's got to do. She needs to not miss right. <laughs> ballet practice. So when she gets off the phone, Tony's like, are you sure you're okay with this? And so I wonder now, did Sam stop working for Angela because she had to do ballet on Saturdays? Because Right, I was going to bring that up. It was either you brought it up when we were watching the episode. Yeah, like either she had to work on Saturdays or now she has ballet on Saturdays. But maybe that got Sam out of that job, and that's why we never see her back yeah, there again. Yeah, we can just pretend that yeah. that's why and move on. <laughs> Let go of the weekend job at, to, at the advertising agency. <laughs> so Sam says that she really wants this. She wants to be a ballerina, and she goes mm-hmm. upstairs. So Tony's like, see, I'm not pushing her into it. She wants it. And Angela says, I think that she has the drive to do it. And Mona says, I hate to say you're right, so I won't say it. I and know. she just leaves. And Angela starts playing again. <laughs> I know. Just to, I love that the cello joke goes through the whole episode. Yes. So now, now we're back to ballet class, and it's more making fun of Cindy. Poor Cindy. So we show, like, they're doing different um poses cindy kind of gets stuck at the bar samantha takes her foot off of it and like helps her down then cindy can't do this like turn and the teacher's like oh forget it and then samantha does it really well so when class ends sam goes up to tony and she's like am i ready for paris or what she's getting a little full of herself here yeah it's it's like been two months (laughs) um and Tony says he can taste the French fries. So they're about to leave, and Sam realizes she forgot her leg warmers. And Tony's like, you go out to the car, and I'll go get him. So as he goes back, and he's like giggling with all the other moms and dancing around like a fool. I know. I know. He really is. But he's probably the talk of that dance class, too. That's a good point. It's just full of them- women, and then Tony. Yes. Tony Maselli. That's funny, though, because that actually used to be your life. Yeah, the, the but I didn't look like Tony was telling. <laughs> I know, but all the moms love you there. I know. But I yeah, used to go to the dance class. You're right. It was yeah, me and all the moms. Kevin used to work an early shift, so he would get out of work at like 2.30 or 3. That's he could right. pick the kids up, and then before COVID, you had to stay there with your children. And our kids dance oh, four days a week, um, yeah, about four, four hours a day. But they don't do just ballet. They do all different types of dance. Right, hip-hop, ballet. Yeah, and it is not at all... I mean, they. it's not at all this... No. Like, strict 
regimen or we, they, we don't no, compete. I mean, like it's yeah, right, just a right, fun. Right, right. But it's been fantastic. I mean, the kids work out. They can do splits. They can do all sorts of stuff. It's just like I have no aspirations for either of them to be a professional dancer, but I feel like they po- probably could if they kept on this track and kept going as hard as yeah. they do. But the thing is, is it's just it's team building. They love their team they because yep. they do dance on a team they don't compete yep. but they perform when we're not in covid we don't perform now but yeah um, and i used to hang out with all the dance moms in the hallway yes so kevin was I had dead. all the gossip but i knew what was going on he did and like <laughs> even when we so they would have dress rehearsals for a recital and one year i set them all up and he changed 18 costumes yeah, right something like that i don't remember yes it's so all a blur was, they call him dance I dad put it all behind me anyway. yeah and then they all started calling me yeah. dance dad that's right <laughs> and it was like literally like people would walk up to me dead serious me like hey dance dad and like they wouldn't even say my name anymore i was dance right, dad yeah and some of the moms there too are like they would say to me like you're so lucky my husband would never even think of coming here yeah so, i didn't have a choice yeah but <laughs> I know, but no, I, I'm just kind of kidding. You don't do it begrudgingly. You do it for no, your yes. children because that's absolutely. what they are doing. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, so that is my other issue with this episode is we're not all going to be Adele and that's fine. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't still pursue. Like there's no reason why Sam shouldn't have stayed and danced. She didn't have to go five days a week. She was taking just ballet and yeah, wasn't she going enjoyed to enjoyed it, then so be it. Yeah. Then, you know, take a couple classes a week, still go out with Chad McCann on Saturday, and yeah. you you know, there are other benefits to dance. So, so I just many, don't so many things wrong with this episode. I just don't like the message that it gives to kids. And I think right. even at the time when I was watching this as a kid, although I still love this episode, I remember thinking like, oh, you know, if you didn't start something when you were two, then you're really not. Like, why do it? Right, right. So I just don't think it's a good message to give to kids. No, it's not. So, I'm sorry. Okay, now, we got completely derailed. I derailed us there. No, it's okay. Sorry. I don't like to talk about us, but I felt like that kind of worked. Well, it kind of worked. It worked in this episode. So anyway. It did, really did. Tony's being silly. He's dancing around like a fool. Um, and... When he goes to get Samantha's leg warmers, he hears Sergey giving Cindy's mom the same story about oodles of talent and that right. Cindy could be a professional dancer. And we all know Cindy sucks. So, <laughs> Cindy according to the episode, suck. according right, to the right. episode, exactly. I'm going with with so, the episode theme. That's and the mom says, "Isn't she a little too?" And he just says, "Fat." Right, which, which so bad. Wow. Yeah. Um, and she says, no, big boned. So Tony confronts Sergey, and Sergey admits that it would be a long shot for Samantha to really be a prima ballerina at this point. So Tony's upset. He goes home and he tells Angela, and Angela's upset, and she so, says. So was Sergey's end game to make money? I yeah. Guess, right? So I his mean, that's thing what we're supposed just, to get out of this. Yes. Is that- so his thing was that he just complimented the kids and got the, the parents to think that they could be professional, get all excited about it, and then sign up for five mm. days a week of classes. But, yeah, Sergey's just kind of a slime ball. Right. So then Oh, I Tony never mentioned off. this actor. I'm sorry. His name oh, is... Oh, Sergey. Yes. Oh, George yeah. C. Time Grant. For this. Mm-hmm. And you know, I think he only had a few credits on IMDb. Mm. So, but his name was George Secret. As okay. So as far as I know, he's still alive. That's why you forgot to <laughs> no, mention anything because there's not much. Also, Cindy Potter is a play is played by an actress named Lisa Marie Moore, and she only had one other credit on mm-hmm. IMDb. Maybe right. she got typecast, and then was like, you know what, this. This is not fun, and I'm out. And then went and had a fabulous life doing yeah, something that uh, made her feel yeah, good about I mean, herself. Of course. So, so when he gets home, um, Angela's like, "Oh, what are you gonna tell Sam?" And Tony basically blames Angela for all of this. <laughs> <laughs> he says it's her fault because she took them to the ballet. I mean, what? 
And then she right, she offered paid to... <laughs> for a night at the ballet, right. so it's her fault. <laughs> and then she offered to pay for the extra lessons, and she gave him that sad little story about the her cello playing the cello. Story. Yeah, that's what did it. And I love when he gets home. Like, has she not been going to work? Has she just been playing the cello all day? Because she's sitting there holding the bow and the cello is out. <laughs> I don't know, but like I said, I love that storyline, and I love that yeah. they held on to it, and they wrote it out through this whole episode. So he's like, I don't know. I mean, how do I go about telling my kid that she doesn't have what it takes? Mm-hmm. And right at that moment, Mona comes in and sees that Angela's holding the bow and says, are you still playing that stupid cello? Give it up, you stink. I know, and that's like, like just shows you Mona, Mona being honest. And then maybe that's how Tony's going to handle it. Oh, well, I guess I got to tell her she stinks. He's like, yeah, okay. That's one way, is what he says. So again, Mona is a funny TV character, but would be a terrible actual mother in real life. (laughs) So Tony goes into the kitchen where Samantha is also practicing ballet Mm -hmm. and doing plies and stuff. And I do think this is a cute scene between Tony and Alyssa, but it's kind of a dumb scene i think between yeah. samantha and tony yeah. um so again you know he's like paris isn't all it's cut out to be My people are rude <laughs> it's funny <laughs> um and you know she starts to get the idea that she's not going to be a prima ballerina and that the, you know what Sergey was saying is that not she doesn't necessarily have any extra special talent that other girls have in that same class. And she says, you know, am I not special? And mm-hmm. he's like, of course you're special. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, like, I don't know. So I get the impression from this scene that Samantha then just stops ballet. And I don't know if that's true or not, because they don't really say I exactly don't, yeah, I don't. and we never see her in ballet class again so that would explain it <laughs> so <laughs> yeah whatever it's like again you don't need to stop just because and just because this bozo said you're not going to be a prima ballerina what if you do still keep going five days a week and you really work hard at it who knows you know right so yeah. whatever i just thought it was a dumb mm-hmm. message no, for agree. kids to i see. agree so now the tag of the episode. <laughs> so this is seriously one of my favorite <laughs> tags of who's the box yet so far. It makes me so sad that they did that to a cello, but I think it's fine. They could just replace that bottom piece because the strings just you know strings are replaceable, and that bottom piece may just sit there with the strings. I guess. I don't think yeah. They actually I mean, the yeah. So anyway, I mean, she just cut the strings, right? Yeah, Angela, but like the whole bottom foot where the strings are falls oops this falls down oh but, yeah i mean that can be easily repaired so angela is playing the cello for the family <laughs> so good <laughs> and they scan their faces jonathan looks like he's at the dentist i know tony, tony looks terrified <laughs> like he just saw something awful <laughs> and samantha has the same look on her face and Angela has the little tongue out again, and she's trying so hard. Oh, she's just going at it. And That's Mona great. just walks in the back door of the living room with some gardening shears, I'm thinking, and goes over and cuts the strings I on know. the... And then they all stand up and start cheering. Which is actually dangerous, too, because the <laughs> strings, like, pop out. Pop, and I know. Face. They probably, I mean, I'm sure they had them very loose for That's true. Judith, That's a good point. But, but yeah, um, that is not. Yeah, again, one of my favorite <laughs> endings to, the, to Who's the Boss so far. Probably my favorite. And I'm pretty sure. Because usually sometimes the, the tag isn't. Yeah, the tag. Great. It's just yeah. the tag. And they're fun. And sometimes they're funny, sometimes they're cute, but this one was awesome. Yeah, sometimes the they're a they nice button it. up, and other times right. they're just sort of like, oh, we need to do something here to end the episode. And just the fact that it kept the cello <laughs> thing going all the way to the end was great. <laughs> Poor Angela. And we never see the cello again. Mm-hmm. I don't think. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure we don't. Okay. I wonder if we could see it. when they, when they Remember the episode where they go up in the attic and Tony cleans the attic? I doubt they had that much foresight <laughs> the to have a cello there. back there and then work it into the storyline. I'm going to go with no, okay. but All right. we scanned that attic pretty well, too, because we, we were did. curious. I'm trying to remember if I saw a cello. <laughs> we're in the garage next to the grocery cart yeah. and the creepy clown. Those haven't been worked into a storyline yet. I'm waiting for that. 
<laughs> okay, so I'm going to go with my rating first okay. here. Oh, okay, good. I'm curious to hear. It's a five. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. I know, that's pretty low. I'm, what? Uh, yeah, but I mean, I mean, kind of not surprising. No, I yeah. just thought maybe the cello moments would have brought it up a little bit. <laughs> oh, that's, I mean, okay. I no, just, no, don't change it now. For Too me, late. It's, a, it's the first episode that this writer has written, and I just thought, like, all the fat jokes were kind of tired and lazy, and the overall storyline was pretty thin, and it didn't have a good message, so I don't know. Mm. The five is for the cello parts. Okay. Otherwise, it could have wow. been Wow, this, this. <laughs> The episode's really a three to you. Four. Um, is, it, is it my turn? It is. It's your turn. Okay. Um, I gave it a six and a half. Wow. You really liked that cello. I did. I think the cello parts were funny. <laughs> no, they were. The tongue hanging out and then Tony like dancing around the, the dance, you know, the, the dance studio. Um, I don't know. I, I thought it was... Maybe six and a half. Yeah, Let me I'll say, too, nine. that my rating could be so low because this was an episode I really liked as a kid. And so watching it oh, now as an adult. Disappointment. I have anger. that Ang- I <laughs> Anger? <laughs> because All it's right. like, yeah. it's not what I really remembered it, which is good because I guess that shows that I've grown as a person <laughs> since yeah. I was 10 or whenever I watched this for the first time. But yeah. Yeah, so. I, mean, I haven't hit anger yet watching <laughs> or it two, season two, 16 episodes, or 15 episodes in. I haven't hit anger yet. But, well, I mean, whatever. It's still young. Podcast is young. Who's the boss around here? Me? Or my mother? Or maybe it's you! Okay, so Mona's the boss in this episode. Hands down. She was kind of like, from the get-go, was pushing against the fact that they were being so pushy about, yeah. well, Tony and Angela being pushy about um, Samantha doing ballet and the whole cello thing. Right. <laughs> and now, I mean, I guess the point was maybe that Angela sucked at the, the cello. <laughs> and maybe... Clearly. And Samantha maybe didn't, wasn't that bad at ballet. But still, right, yeah. she was just kind of like, let her make her own decision. And the fact that really Tony, more than Angela, was being more pushy about. So I think I, I'm i going to say Mona was the boss. Yep. I absolutely agree. I went with Mona also. Mm-hmm. For the same reasons. Just because she brought up initially, like, you can't just push a kid into a mm-hmm. career without... Her and then even when she saw that Samantha wanted it, I don't think she necessarily thought Samantha wanted it for all the right reasons. So right. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. I think maybe she. So maybe that die. Okay, hang on a minute. Uh oh. Maybe Mona is an evil genius, and that dieting story was just BS, so that she would have the Sunday there when Samantha came into the room. Okay. Well, I thought that. My I thought we thought, figured that out. I thought we cracked that. No, I code. thought that the. They had written that part for Catherine Hellman because uh, they needed an ice cream sundae on the table. Mm. But now I think I didn't, yeah, I didn't give Mona the and credit. And at the end of the episode, uh, well, close to the end, Samantha gets to have ice cream. She because, does. yeah, what? Tony's like, do you oh, want yeah, chocolate yeah, yeah. ice cream? Oh, right, right. Yeah, she does. And now you can eat all you want. Exactly. You're not in ballet anymore. Yeah. So, um, And then she cuts the strings at the end. <laughs> oh, which is so insane. <laughs> I mean, she was running yeah. things this whole episode. <laughs> she she was. was in charge. Absolutely. The equalizer. That's what yep. I'm going to call her from now on. I know. I like it. So you can reach us at Who's the Boss Podcast on Instagram or Who's the Boss Pod 1 on Twitter. We're also on the Who's the Boss Podcast page on Facebook. Or go to anchor.fm slash WTB podcast. And there you can leave us a message. We haven't gotten any messages. We no, need messages. No voice we need songs. We need? Uh, cat. Ooh, cat well, says cat's got something to say. <laughs> I think, so we're not going to do it this week, but maybe next week I'll pull out a song of like Tony Danza singing something. I think Alyssa Milano even had an album in a different country that was really popular. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, we need to do some research. So maybe I got to find, yeah, maybe like the theme song to Teen Steam. Which was Alyssa Milano's workout video. Oh, okay. <laughs> that I had on VHS. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, of course. 
Um, so yeah, so I'll figure something else out. But if anybody knows of any Who's the Boss covers, until I can get my kids to sing the karaoke version, then we'll do that. <laughs> now, the next episode we're going to cover is called The Babysitter. And I loved this one as a kid, and it still holds up as an adult. Oh, good. I'm excited We've about watched it, it recently. Um, it ha- the, one of the guest stars is Scott Grimes, who is going to star as Chad McCann. So wait, is this the first? Okay, hang on, hang on. We've heard the name Chad McCann before. Yeah, I know we've heard we it a few times. We haven't seen him. I think this, is that right? Okay. Yeah, this is the first episode where we actually see Chad McCann. Ah. Yeah, so it's a good one. Okay. Um... Bye. Thank you, everyone. All right. Thanks. If you like this podcast, please subscribe and tell all your friends and give you a big pat on the back. Bye. I added some extra.